Hello everybody and welcome to episode 10 of my tutorial series for Dyson Sphere Program. I'm Icon and today we are going to work on the planetary logistics system, getting us one step closer to transport stuff between stars. In the last episode I have made a little bit of a whoopsie when I assumed that this technology was already enough to move stuff between stars. I'm very sorry, I keep messing these up after a long break of this game. I ran into the same trap as I did when I played the game for the first time. This is only step one. This is step two. We're going to need this technology and all what's uh, behind it to transport stuff between one planet and another. I'm sorry if I uh, confused you guys. We are going to set that straight in this episode. Because the neat thing there is this technology is what we need to get this done. The interplanetary stations need one planetary station as an ingredient and therefore all the stuff we're going to set up today is going to be the foundation for the interstellar logistics. We have now researched the particle container technology and next up is the super superconductor technology. That's the last step missing for us to have everything in our hands to get the planetary logistics going except for the titanium with which we still have to get off world so today's episode we are going to tinker on the planetary logistics system and then we are going to move towards the production of yellow cubes and then we are going to move towards the production of interstellar logistics so that's the rough roadmap ahead okay so what do we need for these things so let's get on up there so the logistics drones are quite easy they pick up stuff and they fly from one station to another and transport it production wise we are needing processors we haven't made these yet thrusters we haven't made these yet either and iron plates these are at least a known thing the other thing there is the planetary logistics station this is like a uh, like a mail center you can configure which goods should be transported from a to b there we're going to get into that i'm not sure if this episode will be enough for that because we have to prepare a lot of stuff and i really mean it when i say a lot of stuff so as you see here the planetary logistics station also needs processors but also the particle traps the particle traps or particle containers are full with stuff we haven't seen yet. So we're going to need those maglev thrusters or uh, no, electromagnetic turbines. And we're going to need graphene, the stuff we're researching right now. So today we are going to prepare the materials we need for that as good as possible. And in the meantime, in the background, stuff we'll research. So let's start with the processors because we are going to need a couple of these. Processors are made out of circuit boards and microcrystalline components. As you see here, microcrystalline components are made out of silicon and copper. So I head on over here to the solar panel factory and I see everything I need here. That's pretty cool. So we're going to just lengthen our silicon production there. And here I am going to do it like that. The processors are going to need microcircuits and those components. So let's check it out. We are producing two thirds of a uh, two thirds of a microcrystalline components per assembler, and we are producing half a microcrystalline component per assembler. So we're going to make two assemblers with microcrystalline components. Oh, well, let's see what, we're, what what this will bring us. I mean, the problem there is we only have a very limited amount of silicon on this planet. Silicon is not native to this planet, therefore it is really not that easy to get that stuff going in larger amounts. So we are going to prepare ourselves those microcrystalline components, and we are going to pipe them off into this direction here, so we can produce our processors back there in peace. So let's get on up the sorters we need. One for yeah. one here. And one there. And out right there. Oh uh here uh, that that's uh that's a mistake there. This can't be here. You can't put stuff on elevated belts. 
we can only put stuff on belts that are sitting on the ground. Very important ground rule. So this way we can just copy that dude, power him up, and now we produce the microcrystalline components. We are going to use this uh, thingy here, and uh, I'll just uh, run it all the way down there, and we are going to go over here for the processor production. It's a little bit off-site, and I am not that super happy with the location of our production line, but at the same time, we are not yet at the point where we are producing processors and the like in a larger scale. So I'm merely tinkering around and getting myself basic production of these goods going so that I can work with them. To get this production rolling in a larger scale, we will need to visit the other planet anyways, because we're not going to get enough silicon here. Never. Ever. So, our first processor is produced, and we are going to pipe them out. Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to leave them here in the assemblers for now, because I have no clue where I will need them, so let's leave them for now here. So, we have the first thing produced processors. They are quite easy. The only problem there is you will never have enough silicon for these on your starting planet from my personal experiences. Okay, so thrusters, steel and copper. Now that's an easy one. We will not have any issue with that except for the fact that uh, the raw copper in our base is not exactly where our steel is at. So well let's see what we can do about that. I have copper in this uh, in this direction already. So how about us piping some steel into this direction to work with? Let's go. And I'm going to get on over here and use a splitter here. And uh, where are we going to go? Up ahead there. Put this on an elevated uh, pole there a little bit and uh, roll it all the way down there. So we have some steel to work with at the site. Let's put that down on the ground and here we go. So we're using quite a lot of belts these days and we're still using everywhere tier 1 materials. That should show you that we are not at a very very far spot in the game yet. Tier 1 belts are only only the beginning, but the starter base, like it is, is now also reaching its end. I personally love to use my starter base until I have the interplanetary logistics going. Usually, as soon as I have access to interplanetary logistics, I like to dump my starter base and use it for the stuff that I can still produce there, but I really love to set up a a serious mall because once we have interplanetary logistics we will be able to transport stuff between planets in a much much easier manner and this will help us so much that it really gives us the opportunity to plan this place entirely different right now it's turning more and more into a mess and that's what all my starter bases turn into in the long run that's mostly because it's really hard to uh, to know where everything's going to be in the first place when you are just starting out. So I've just decided that the processors can be sitting on this spot here. We'll see how this will play out in the long run. Okay, so let's get back to the topic. Logistics drones are now pretty much doable for us. We only need to make the thrusters. So let's see. One logistics drone eats half a thruster per second so we would need two assemblers for thrusters if we would make it if we would want to make it really efficient but i don't want efficient at this point because it is enough for me to have some place where we produce those drones i really don't mind if it is a tad bit inefficient therefore we're going to go to produce thrusters here and only one facility instead of the two we'd need. So thrusters, steel and copper. And now we go ahead and place down another assembler 
and connect these two assemblers with each other. Let's see. I hope it's not too close. No, it ain't. And we are producing our drones here. So we need processors and iron plates. Oh, boy, iron plates. Who would have thought that the good old iron plate is going to be a thing soon? And we have a bit of uh, fuel issues here. Hey, so let's use some leftovers here in the inventory. And by the way, even use organic crystals, but they are really bad for that regard. Okay, so let's see and uh, check out how we can get ourselves some iron plates back into this joint. So luckily, I have yet another connector here. And as you see there, it really does pay off to have those... Uh, to have those splitters everywhere. I mean, sure, you don't need to put up the splitters everywhere like I do here. It is enough to leave enough room in the system, but I love it to just uh, have those connectors and do your thing, not not having any trouble, you know. So here we go. So we are going to actually, actually, I'm going to go like this. Let's put the iron onto on this place. All right, we have now finally researched graphene. Graphene is going to be a real pain in the rear to craft. Graphene needs sulfuric acid, and sulfuric acid needs to be crafted itself yet again. So we'll have to do a lot of work in that regard. So by the way, we are also needing some uh, some graphite. So, I'll have to recharge down there. Of course, you can also instead just use the, the charge-up towers that you can produce. But I personally love energetic graphite at the, in the early stages of the game. My favorite way of powering my mech. So, we are running low on battery. Yeah, yeah, that's not long though. Okay, so this part now is going to be the easier part, and we are going to produce our graphene on the other part of the on the other side of the map. The graphene will be needed for the particle containers, and I'm really really tempted to uh, use our planetary logistics systems exactly for that regard to transport those materials we need over here but let's see if i can realize that okay so we have now still a lack of iron plate but that's not much longer a thing here we go and processor and last but not least container okay so we are now producing the drones for our logistics centers these can be super handy if you don't want to clot the whole planet with belts. And your your, specat your your specatification factor of your factory is going to lower tremendously the more you use of those. So, let's get going. We will now use the technologies we have at hand to produce graphene. Graphene needs sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid needs stone, oil, and water. So here's one cool thing that we're going to do here. Remember our oil, uh, our oil refineries that we were using for the red cubes? Remember that they were producing oil as a side product and energetic graphite as a side product? We're going to use exactly these now get ourselves a little bit ahead in competition because this is a way of recycling our materials in a real real nice manner so we're going to set up shop here i have here one storage of refined oil another storage of refined oil here one storage of, of graphite here another storage of graphite there so it's even logistically close and if ever, 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 any of these materials will run out, we have coal veins, crude oil seat right around the corner, and the stone we need for the processing. So it's a practically perfect site to get going for our graphene production. 
we're going to transform that stuff into particle containers later. Okay, now let's start with the mining. We're going to extract the stone first. And if I remember correctly, one mining machine should be enough. But I don't like to settle down with just one mining machine if I can't have two of them. It's always better. So, let's see. I want something that has six nodes. And sometimes you really have to... Uh, you really have to work your, your way around until you have access to six nodes or more. Pretty normal. Okay. All in all, it is more and more noticeable how much benefit our our mall brings to us. The prepared materials we work with speed up the entirety of the production's uh, progress so massively. It's really a blessing. Okay. So, we are going to do one thing next. We're going to unify the oil storages from both sides there. So, I'm going to run there. And let's see. We're going to run down here. And obviously we'll have to move above the solar panels. And let's see. Let's make the meet up here yet again. Put that stuff also on a splitter. Combine. And now let's do a similar thing for the energetic graphite. Let's see. We got one container here, and we got the other container there. So I'd say they'd ideally meet somewhere around here. Okay. Always make sure that where you want to put the stuff onto the belt, you have a you have the belt on the ground because, like I said. You cannot put anything on a belt, on an elevated belt. So, here we go. That's the first thingy. Wait a sec. I don't want to make it like this because we want to unify those guys. And, uh... Nay, out of power again. Okay. It's about time that we are going to use the hydrogen fuel rods as a standard source of power. Or you just uh, use those uh, wireless power towers. How about that? This should juice me up a tad bit too. There we go. Okay, so we got stone, and let's make sure that... Yeah, here we go. Everything's going alright. So, the first graphene production is kind of a big thing, because you are stuck with so many different things that you haven't used yet. And, uh... The sulfuric acid production is also kind of a pain. Alright, let's slip like that. But I do love the procedure here, mostly because we are using all the uh, excess product there, and uh, this gets rid of all the backup of all of our old um, setup there, and I really, really like that. Okay, so now we got that. And here we go. So, energetic graphite. Let's get back to the recipe. 
So we got the graphite, but we don't have the acid yet. For the acid, we're going to need oil, water, and stone. So water. With water, it's a little bit strange with this recipe. So you see, you're using four units of water in six seconds. So let's see. That is two thirds of a unit per second, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see, we are producing how much water per second? I gotta check how many water pumps we need. So it's another resource extractor, which you have to set up there on water. You can also use this if you have sulfuric acid uh, on as an ocean source. The same building can just pump out sulfuric acid for you out of the ocean. This would easy would easy up things a lot for us, but well. So let's see. The water pump is use is producing five sixths of uh, water per minute uh, per second. So okay, fine. Yay! I have more efficiency there. Okay, so we're going to need oil, water, and stone for this operation. So I'd say we're gonna go down there. Oil, water, uh, oil, stone. And we're going to, let's see. Gonna bring that up on a chemical facility. Well, let's make it like this. So the water is going to be here. There we go. And let's put that sulfuric acid into this direction. Go. So, stone, oil, water, sulfur acid. Twice. Just to make sure that we really use all the material that we got. This is, in so far, really, really awesome for us because this is giving us the opportunity to use up all the backlog of uh, refined oil that we had and turn it into something really, really useful. So here somehow the belt got wired up into the wrong direction. Okay there, so we got the sulfuric acid. Now we only need the graphene and we're good to go. So we are going to produce graphene also in a chemical plant. So let's see, where could we go? I think it ain't that bad here. But at the same time, this is not where the belts really meet. So we'd have to go this, and this would be ideal. So let's roll on over like that, with an exit into this direction. Let's just hope I can whip up two of these chemical plants here. So this is not how I like to operate in a larger scale. This is okay for a small scale operation, because right now we are really only trying to get ourselves some graphene. I'm not trying to satisfy any ratios here or trying to make the job go down the road really efficiently. No, we are really only trying to get ourselves the graphene for the productions we need. And that's all. Okay, so we have all set up. Let's plug it in. And once you have done your first graphene production, congratulations, you are 
in one of the more, you, you are now past one of the more annoying parts of the game. I don't know why, but for me, the first graphene production is always so nasty. Maybe because there is an alternative recipe allowing you to produce graphene just out of fire ice, where you do n need nothing else than fire ice, and then you can transform it directly into graphene. Sounds easy? That's because it is. So... We are going to set up now... Well, let's see. Let's put it down here, maybe. One place to store all the sulfuric acid at. Because I don't want to uh, have another backup of, uh, of oil down there again. Okay, so now we have the graphene set up that we need. So particle containers are made out of graphene, copper, and these uh, thrusters. So, we have our whole setup, or our whole facility setup here, and I will do one thing here. We are going to, uh, let's see, maybe I'm not going to move that stuff here. I'm going to move the graphene away from this site via logistics. So let's do this like that totally dismantle that because I just decided that I want to go down the other way because we are right now just at the point where we are finally able to uh, finally able to transport things over the planet with ease and since this point is now that close, I'm really not down to transporting the graphene, especially this small scale production with a big, big bad conveyor belt all over the place. No, we're not gonna. So what we are going to do though, is we are going to set up a storage facility there for the time being. This is very important to have the storage facility now because I don't want to, that these two guys here are ever standing still. I want them to produce 24-7, so to say. The graphene here produced will be transported to the other factory once we have the logistics system going on. Until then, I'm going to craft these particle containers a little bit uh, unconventional. Let's get on over there and let's get started. I'm going to grab myself a little bit of graphene there. And if I ever happen to run out of energetic graphite or oil in these uh, sections there, I'll be just upgrading the production accordingly. But for the time being, I love it to have this kind of uh, waste management, so to say. Now, we are going to need these uh, electromagnetic turbines. They are made out of electric motors and these coils, which I happen to have right here around the corner. Isn't it nice? So we're going to produce only, well, let's make two of these machines. So there we go. Coil engine. Oh, forgot to produce. Because these guys will be needed in larger amounts later. But like I said before, I have to rescale this whole place rather sooner than later anyway, so I really don't want to uh, I really don't want to stress myself out here too hard. I don't know. If any people out there are wired differently than me and uh, keep their starter base and make it shine and uh, polish it and all until it's really awesome, but I am more that type of guy. I use my starter base until I have the, the tools to build something bigger and better, and then we're going to go for a new one there. So let me know in the comment section how you like to operate. So the last few things we are going to do now are pretty obvious. We are going to set up a little bit of a facility where we're producing the particle containers. So I'm just wiring the uh, electromagnetic thrusters over here. Where our 
new site is slowly coming together. So, let's see. Let's use a bit of an above ground situation there. So, we are going to need... Let's see. We need copper and two other pretty exclusive materials. Okay. Alright. Particle containers are something we are going to need if I remember correctly, not only for this, but for also for other things. But I, I can't really remember where all that stuff was used again. It's a lot. Okay, so we have copper, and uh, I'll just let it flow like that. If we want to continue the iron, we're just going to let it run across somewhere else. And now, let's set up the last assembler. And this guy will produce particle containers for us, so... We need this, we need that, and, uh... Yeah. The graphene, which I sadly can't put in here in larger amounts. So that's a tad bit sad. But what can you do? Okay, so we're going to output that stuff here. And I'll even set it up twice. Because I know how much these things are going to be needed. Okay. All right. Good. So we have these guys, and basically we can now grab all the parts together. Let's just say we're going to put these uh, into a storage for the time being, because I really want that these machines don't stop producing particle containers, but I really don't want them to non-stop produce. So what do we need? We need 40 processors. Forty particle traps. It's going to be probably the longest part of this. And uh, forty steel bars and forty titanium bars. Well, you see, there's a lot of stuff on the uh, on the shopping list which we can't produce locally as of yet, but that's just totally fine. All right, we're reaching the end of today's episode. It's been already a bit pretty late. But, uh, there's my depot. So, for the time being, we are going to transport the graphene manually over there. I'm gonna just do add in the last touch, and then I'm going to outro this. So, in the next episode, we are going to start looking at what we need for the interplanetary logistics, and we are going to set up a small-scale production of the... Um... Sorry for the memory lapse. Um, for, we're going to set up the. Oh, that's good. We're going to set up the um, yellow cube production, and we're going to check out what we're going to need for the interplanetary logistics to make them happen. So, I can't already spoiler so much. We are going to have to refine titanium with sulfuric acid. Oh God. Just wanted to put that stuff in there. So. And now we can. Okay, I'm using this as kind of a hotfix to make sure that the uh, particle containers are being produced there. 
Okay, so next episode we are also going to set up a planetary logistics uh, station there. Because obviously we want to transport our graphene. <laughs> My mind is uh, sometimes a little bit uh, like that. Because we want to transport our graphene from one part of the planet to another without the orbit belt. And I feel like it's a wonderful opportunity to show you guys how it's done. And we're going to use that later down the road a lot because it's really, really useful. Okay, comments down, go down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.